morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to talk um, um, today so about um, our transformation program. I'm going to attempt to summarize it. It's a three-year program. I've got about 15 minutes, so I'm going to move pretty quickly. Um, so apologies in advance for that. Um, I'm going to finish on calling out some, some key um, lessons that we've learned to date that um, might be beneficial for anybody doing, trying to do something similar. Um, so first of all, who are, who, who are three? Um, you may not know we're part of the CK um, Hutchison Group, which is a massive um, multinational uh, conglomerate. Um, in Ireland, we're the second biggest operator. We've got, a, I think, about 40% market share right now. We've got the biggest um, B2B enterprise sector. Um, our background starting point, you may not know, is actually Tree in Ireland is actually made up of um, what was O2 and um, Tree Ireland. Two companies came together back in 2014. Um, so that is our starting point for our transformation. Uh, it presents its own set of problems in that we have two sets of channel systems, two sets of billing systems, charging systems, care systems, two telco networks. Um, so we are CSP with two websites, not just the CSP with one website. Um, so we did a rebrand in 2015, which was basically consolidated down to one single website. But effectively, behind the scenes, it's, it's two, two customer bases, uh, two sets of IT stacks, 12 product catalogs in total. So that was our starting point. Um, so a you know, traditional IT strategy would focus on obviously rationalizing, consolidating the systems, reducing cost. Um, so we were embarking on that and we kind of decided, well, maybe we need to look uh, a little bit to the future also. And we kind of discovered that this was going on. Um, so the new, the new needs of customers, this is a bit tongue in cheek, but there is a lot of truth in it in that, you know, the you know, pervasion of smartphones, connectivity, always on, it, it's real. Um, it, it's definitely re real and it's happening. Um, that kind of led to, here's a kind of a, a representation of the, I guess, the modern di uh, digital world. Um, so customers expect, expect to know where they are, who they are. They expect to engage uh, your business in a channel that's convenient to them. And there is also a kind of an instant gratification desire, you know, they're not prepared to wait for, you know, services to activate. There's very, in, I'd summarize it by saying there's very little tolerance for any sort of friction in, in um, engagements, experiences, or journeys. Um, so that has led to, you know, along with uh, all the IT consolidation, rationalization, so we've added a, a digital transformation on top just to, you know, to add to the list. So we are about... Um, halfway through this, this uh, transformation. And I mean, the, the shift is literally moving from your traditional siloed based channels to implementing an omni-channel, refreshing all the data intelligence capability, uh, moving to real-time um, analytics campaigns, campaigns of one, um, and everything goes with that. Uh, it, the, the best way to bring it to life, I guess, the target vision is the, gonna show a, a play of video Tree Vision is the name of the program. The summer festival was a huge hit. Hundreds of subscribers viewed the live streaming events, creating a real social buzz. Now let's go back in time and behind the scenes to see what it takes to go from business goal to business success fast. We will start with Ian from 3 Marketing, who will create and launch the new offering. To boost data adoption, Ian is assigned a new project. He needs to create a targeted offering for music lovers. With full access to available assets across lines of business, Ian can quickly create the new bundle. The new Single Master Enterprise catalogue plays a key role in accelerating the process by integrating several catalogues into one, adding automation and providing more control to business users. With the promotion ready to go, Master Enterprise Catalog is also responsible for distributing the information to all OSS and BSS, ensuring that the information is coherent and up to date across the entire organization. Ian also promotes the new offering via the different channels to create excitement. 
Now that the offering is ready for consumption, let's go to Mary, a music lover and free subscriber. Since she has history of music-related purchases, she receives Ian's targeted promotion. Mary is drinking her morning coffee and checking messages on the three self-service portal when she notices the summer festival promotion. Mary is interested and begins the purchase, but then has a question, so she calls the call center. With the omni-channel view of customer interactions, Jana knows the exact point in Mary's process. When Mary inquires about the new smartphone device and the promotion, Jana can quickly provide the required information. Mary prefers to see the device before making a decision, so Jana schedules her visit at the store. When Mary enters the store, she is greeted by John. As part of the seamless omni-channel experience, John sees exactly what Mary is interested in buying. John has the smartphone ready for Mary. After checking it out, Mary is convinced and completes the purchase. Our last act before the show goes to Jared, a three business customer. Jared is the producer for the summer festival event and his team is under a lot of pressure. Jared recently purchased a fixed mobile business bundle to reduce costs and improve his ability to run a business on the go and to keep in touch with his team in the office and during events. The fixed mobile convergence also provides a convenient way to keep in touch with his team in the office and during events. Wait, what's the alarm? Jared looks at his personalized dashboard to review the data consumption. He realizes that the data usage has increased due to their hectic event. Real-time charging empowers customers with real-time consumption and spending insight across any service or payment method. This personalized view is enabled by using widgets, packaging business logic, back-end interfaces and UI, reduce IT operational costs due to more efficient and automated deployment methodology. Jared can quickly upgrade his business plan. This easy change in allowances through self-service reduces manual interaction and errors and is one of the many benefits that 3 can give to its SMB customers. With the help of the Join 3 IT and Amdocs, everything is now ready. And the show can go on. So um, that is a actual video that we make everybody go through in their induction when they join the company. <laughs> um, okay, so um, how are we doing so far? So, um, like I said, it's a three-year program. We're just over halfway. Um, I would call out um, these two key uh, points. Um, these long transformation programs can very easily become just an IT program, especially when they start going, going badly. So we've um, done a lot of things to kind of consciously design the business into the program and, and actually keep them in there. Um, the, other, the other call out is like um, is there is always a temptation just to uh, design and solution for what you currently have. So we find ourselves going back, how does it work today on the O2 stack or the 3 stack? We actually all have to continuously resist the temptation to um, not just settle for that but to try and design for the future also. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few things that we did that actually that have worked really well to date. Um, the first one is actually put a lot of thought and consideration into the designing the governance. The governance is very important. Um, so in the, in the big red box, there are, there are three key players in the governance. There's a traditional design authority, which is like any other design authority in any company. Uh, but there are uh, two new teams. There's a business design authority and a business transformation team. So these are uh, teams of actual business people, cross-functional, that were taken out of the business to work exclusively on this project. And the idea behind the business design authority is that we are, we are following a, a process-led, product-led transformation. Um, and the idea is to transform the business uh, towards that product um, rather than doing a traditional requirements gathering, et cetera. Um, so a, a kind of a, a measure of the success actually is most of the issues that are dealt with by the program are dealt with, uh, are, are handled between the BDA and the BTT. They, they actually handle more issues than the technical design authority. 
which is actually a good, a good measure. Um, the other thing, obviously, is don't forget the people and the culture expa um, aspect. And the, there, are, there are lots of considerations there, but the ones I would call out is um, we, we deliberately uh, did a mindset training program for people who are on board to, to the projects. We brought in an external company to basically reset everybody's, everybody's expectations, thought processes. We had a lot of legacy in that we had silos of people who came from uh, O2, we had silos of people who came from Tree. Both sides thought that the way they did it was better. Um, we needed to restart and tear, it all, tear all that up and, and start afresh. So we, it was a very important step um, that went down really well. Everybody felt it was really, really worth doing. Um, the other call out is this, this product led process driven scoping is actually very new for people, you throw in Agile with it. A lot of people have not gone through it, especially in the business. Um, so it's very important to get that started right and educate people on how it's going to work. Um, so we ended up doing a lot of dry runs to get, to get, that, get that working. Um, the other thing we did was we introduced the concept of business design principle. So these were like uh, literally a conscious decision around how we wanted to operate as a business going forward. So we wrote up a set of key business design principles, um, and these are objectives of the program to deliver. <coughs> they, they, uh, they work in, in, um, in tangent with a set of solution design principles, which were, are your typical kind of architecture um, design principles. Um, so you have business, business design principles that are effectively mastered, managed by business transformation team, and you got a set of solution design principles that are managed by the technical design authority. But the two actually dovetail together and have to work together. Um, the other consideration, here's a list of the, the top five um, business design principles. Um, nothing really, I suppose, surprising there. You, you've got your omnichannel sales and support, so you have to get that right. Uh, you've got to break the silos in the, in the channels from a care and sales perspective. The data intelligence capability has got to come up, so big, a big um, switch from your traditional batch campaigning and offline analytics to real-time campaigns and real-time analytics. A lot of investment going in there. An interesting one was this effortless onboarding. Um, so we, we, did a, we did an analysis on, on what was causing a lot of contacts and calls to the call center. And a lot of them were from customers who were in their first 90 days of, of life. And we, we looked at why that was. And it was, there was a lot of uh, friction or issues that we were creating ourselves. Their first bill experience, you know, billing in advance, billing in arrears, all this complexity that we put into, into the experience. So a lot of work has gone into that principle about removing those uh, poor experiences, removing that friction. Um, the other one is uh, obviously the, the propos proposition agility. You know, by nature of the transformation itself, that will happen going from 12 product catalogs down to one. But the one I want to talk a little bit about is the beyond mobile. So it would be remiss to do a digital transformation and not address or try to address one of the key challenges of our business, which is the commoditization of telco products and services declining revenue. So this design principle was put in to try and address that. So it's recognition of the importance of you know, non-mobile product sets to try and supplement the you know, traditional uh, revenues which have been squeezed. So it aims to you know, support or enable greater innovation, <coughs> building an architecture that allows you to you know, partner much more easily, do POCs, I mean, no one knows what's going to work in the future, but you need to have the capability to, to swap partners in and out uh, really quickly. And it's a reminder for the program to build and design for the future, uh, ensuring that the architecture is flexible enough to support you know, non-mobile products. So our integration partner, uh, Tori Harris, which uh, Kartik is from, are they are key to supporting us on, the, on that principle. Um, I'm going to finish with an architecture diagram. So, the, it's a traditional tree layer diagram, so the channels at the top, integration layer in the middle, and backends at the back. So we, we did this to test um, in the red spaces where we would put in all these partners, and how we would do that, and what elements would need to change. 
and so on. So our future intention obviously would be to fill that red circle um, with many vast varied partners uh, as possible, uh, but to do it in a way that doesn't compromise your, our, our own telco BSS. So you, we need to not make the mistakes of the past where you customize your BSS to be a finance system, an insurance system. So you need to be very clear that we're, we partner for capability, that we don't uh, change our BSS, telco BSS, into something that's not, um, you know, and, and, and uh, break uh, future upgrade paths, et cetera. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Carty, who's going to talk about Tory Harris's capability in that red circle space. Thanks. Thanks, Hugh. So with Hugh's talks, we have seen the structure that an operator takes to, to implement digital transformation. So in my talk, I'm going to talk about how this structure can lead to a B2B to B2C business models. So digital transformation is all about building platform businesses and building a digital ecosystem. And B2B to C represents new revenue opportunities for telco that this a structure like three empowers. So, so if you see, traditionally, operators have been engaging in price wars to retain their market share. So, so, so usually constant price cuttings and constant kind of uh, back and forth reactive stance of telcos has not taken them very far. So, so the need of the R is for telcos to leapfrog the price wars to make sure that they address the challenge from market challengers and OTT players. Because there are instances where mobile operators are offering data for free. For example, if you take the case of Jio in India, we have seen the keynote from Jio. So Jio is offering the data services for free. So, so constantly engaging price wars is not going to take telcos very far. So the need of the R is for telcos to leapfrog the price wars and start thinking about offering B2B2C business model. So what goes in the pipe is more valuable than providing the connectivity itself. So the identity of mobile operators are changing from being a career to being a, a, a true digital ecosystems enabler. Now, what do we mean by that? Here we are talking about a platform business model. So a platform business model is the one which, which brings together consumers and providers together and offers a much valuable offering to their end customers. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of platforms. So all platforms are not equal. There are many platform businesses that are not successful. Some are successful, some are not. Now we need to understand what makes platform businesses really successful. So, so the key here is systems integration. So, so when you take a platform businesses for, let's say, IoT solutions, when you have different IoT providers coming together to offer an IoT solution, Usually, if you, if you look at it from an operator's perspective, operators provide the connectivity that's very essential for an IoT solution. But if you look at the target customer, which is a business customer, they may not be having the required skills to put the IoT solution together, integrate with their systems, and make an offering. So operators need to offer system integration services that not only provides connectivity, but also the, the, the system integration to put all the pieces together. Now let's see an example of what AT&T is doing in the US. So, so the, the case that I talked about, the operators offering system integration is being offered by, uh, by AT&T. So, so we have a short video clip from Mike Troiano who, who talks about how AT&T provides these capabilities to their customers. With their customers beyond connectivity? Sure, so the question's really around how are we as a carrier transforming beyond basic transport. I, I will tell you transport is what pays the bills, it keeps the lights on. So, you know, that is job number one. We have to do that not only domestically, but to your point, more and more of our customers are asking us to solve the problem globally. They're also asking us to solve regardless of communication paths. So for example, last year we launched or introduced a satellite offer. So you think about going back to that connected tractor example for a minute. You know, a, a tractor coming off a factory line can have satellite or cellular radios in it, depending on, on coverage. One of the customers we talk about publicly quite a bit is a relationship that we have with Maersk Line, which is one of the largest shipping container companies in the world, where we actually play the role of a systems integrator. So to your question, James, getting beyond pure connectivity, where we, we are the responsible party for the hardware, the software, and helping them implement and deploy that solution, what they're doing is they're tracking and monitoring, uh, excuse me, almost 300,000 refrigerated containers around the globe in about 140 countries every day. When those ships are out on the ocean, they're communicating via, uh, via satellite. 
When those ships get close to shore, it rolls over to the cellular network. Again, a good example of how hardware, software, pro services, managed services help to transform that. Yeah. So, so we've seen like how AT&T is actually doing this. So, so one of the key characteristics based on what AT&T is doing is for operators to think in terms of active platforms. So active platforms are the ones that allow your customers to build community of users. And when I say community, in the telco context, we are talking about creating domain-specific communities, domain-specific platforms. They want like one, for in, like one for insurance, one for banking, one for energy management. And the chances of active platforms being successful are very, very high. If you take the example of Facebook and LinkedIn, they are examples of active platforms. Facebook provides the tools for you to build your own community of users. And if you see the engagement within the community is very high. With this context, let's see the three levels of platform opportunity. So first opportunity is for the operators to become a platform themselves. So one of the business units in an operator transforming into a platform. So healthcare is one of the most highly recommended platform business opportunity even by TM Forum. The second opportunity is for CSPs to become a platform enabler, which means they go to a B2B customer and say, hey, we can transform you into a platform. We have the BSS, we can API enable BSS, we offer it as a service. We can, we can provide the required tools to convert you into a platform and we'll provide all the required technical capabilities and business capabilities to transform you into a platform business. So here the opportunity is CSP as a platform enabler. And last but not the least is the at and example. CSP is not just being a platform enabler but also offering systems integrator to close the loop and, and win in the B2B ecosystem space. So, so in terms of the steps taken for, required for the CSP, first, CSPs need to open up their system. So, so not only their system should be able to support their business, but their system should be able to support other businesses. So open up the systems as APIs. Second is to onboard their customers into their ecosystem, so API enablement for their customers. And last thing is to, to help customers consume and expose their APIs, which is the system integration part. So at, at that point of time, I would like to introduce uh, a framework called Digit Market. It's a framework of Tori Harris. So, so when you're talking about CSPs transforming other businesses to become a platform, you need the underlying technology to, to, to create a platform. So you need like a digital marketplace. You need capabilities to onboard providers and consumers. You need contract management. You need, uh, you need the complete life cycle. So Digit Market is the platform that makes it possible. So, so there are tools and processes. I don't have time to go into each of this in detail. Uh, so you have the likes of IoT integration, API management, digital marketplace that puts all these things together. And one of the key differences is we allow operators to rebrand this as their own offering and distribute it in the form of a white label offering. So that's one of the key differentiators. So, so I'd like to, to close this session with a short video clip, uh, a story of Home Genie. So Home Genie is a platform business. Uh, it's an initiative from our side. Where, which is an avatar of Digit Market. So Home Genie is built on top of Digit Market to, to digitally empower people who don't have the opportunity to go digital otherwise. So, so, so I'll kind of show you. It's a home, it's a home services platform. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kartika. I'm a housewife. I recently moved to Bangalore and everything was new to me. My house needed some fixing and I didn't know where to get people who could help me out. Luckily, I found Home Genie app. Namaskara. Nan Esther Sumati Anta. Nan Manekalsa Marta Ide. Home Genie in the Bandru, Kelsa Kortini Anta Eludru. App in the Ink Kelsa Sigute Anta and Kondide. In the Tumba and Kula Gide, Kelsa no Sikide. Madaganga, Yampe Rom Prakasha, Nyinga Mestri Vala Patrika, Mesri Darka, Marvadi Valkati Romba Katimanche, Rombo, Roma Kabeta Valakinda, Kavan the constructor la Tedi Patatwana Matka, Apude and the Concha Sonanga app home genina and the app Molima Kanare Valakati Terka. I'm John He or may Ake either mechanic Kakam Kartao. Mira to come to both Kamogayata, Japse Home Genie se apps and Majudahu, Tapse Ake Mera life, Bohot a Chaogaya. Abi Ake Kahena. कस्टमर का घर में जाके करता हूं और गाड़ी इधर ही लेके आके करता हूं गैरेज में अभी जब से होम जीनी ऐप आया है तब से मेरा लाइफ अच्छा हो गया है ये ऐप बहुत आसान है यूज करने के लिए और इसमें आके मंथली कैलेंडर है इसमें कितने कितने कस्टमर आते हैं करके मेरे को मालूम होता है और कस्टमर किधर किधर है करके मुझे मैप में मालूम पड़ता है हाय माय नेम इज अरुण आई वर्क एज एन आईटी प्रोफेशनल बुकिंग अ सर्विस विद माय वर्क स्केड्यूल इज क्वाइट अ पेन 
I need an electrician or a plumber's service at my place. It can be a bit of challenge to sink. Home Jini, my home suffer. Home Jini, into Naiman. Thank you, Home Jini. I love my Home Jini. Okay, so this video shows the opportunity for CSPs to offer a B two B two C business model. So Home Jini is an example of a B two B two C business model that's built on digit market. So the opportunity here is to take digit market. Customize and rebrand as your own offering, and open up different platform business opportunities. So, so this is a summary of what I presented. So, this is an opportunity for operators to leapfrog the price wars and become a B two B two C business. Thank you very much. Okay.